This presentation is one of six on non-destructive testing. The topics covered by the other presentations are Introduction to Non-Destructive Testing, Penetrant Testing, Eddy Current Testing, Magnetic Particle Testing, and Ultrasonic Testing. This presentation is an introduction to radiographic testing. The material is not intended to train individuals to perform NDT functions, but rather to acquaint them with the NDT equipment and methods that they are likely to encounter. Knowledge of the basic principles and typical applications should enable them to know when to call for help from experts. This presentation will discuss radiographic inspection or radiography. Most of us are familiar with the concept of penetrating radiation to create images of internal structure. The method works because material density and thickness variations absorb the incident energy creating shadow graphs on film or digital detectors. We will discuss electromagnetic radiation, the principles of radiography, the sources of radiation, and various methods of making images. Since radiation is dangerous to living things, we will also discuss radiation safety. Finally, we will discuss the advantages and limitations of radiography and a glossary of terms. The electromagnetic energy spectrum is very broad, ranging from very low radio wave frequencies to visible light to very high frequency gamma rays. The radiation used for radiography is much higher energy, shorter wavelength, than the visible light spectrum. The short wavelength allows this energy to penetrate many materials. The basic method of radiography is to place the test article between the source of radiation and the radiation detector. Film is commonly used as a detector because the X-ray radiation effectively exposes the film. Thicker and more dense regions will stop more of the radiation than thinner and less dense regions. The film density or darkness varies with the amount of radiation which reaches the film. The film is darker if more radiation is received. Other detectors such as image intensifiers used on real-time radiography systems will result in the opposite condition more radiation received will appear brighter. The energy of the radiation may be adjusted for the proper exposure. The higher the energy, the thicker or more dense the test articles may be. Much like visible light photography, the exposure time may also be varied for the proper exposure. This slide illustrates the effect of varying the energy to create two different exposures of the same test article. The thick walled area becomes completely overexposed when using the higher energy necessary to reveal the details of the thicker walled regions. When radiography is used for crack detection, the method responds to the crack as a change in thickness. The larger the change in thickness, the easier it is to detect the crack. Since cracks appear thick in only one direction and thin in an orthogonal direction, it's important that the direction of the x-rays be parallel to the crack thus presenting the greatest effective thickness change. This sensitivity limitation makes it difficult to detect cracks that are not aligned directly along the line of sight of the x-rays. This slide illustrates how the relative percent change in effective thickness varies with the position of the source relative to the crack. This slide illustrates this sensitivity to x-ray orientation. The crack is detectable with the source up to 10 degrees off axis but is not detectable at 20 degrees off axis. Thus, the orientation of the defect must be well known if it is to be detected by radiographic inspection. The two most common sources of radiation are X-ray generators and gamma ray sources. These two sources of radiation will be discussed in detail. The gamma ray source is typically higher energy and used in heavy industry for large, thick section test articles. The X-ray generators are more flexible sources because the energy can be tuned. These sources are more commonly used for a very large range of applications. Gamma rays are produced when the unstable nucleus spontaneously breaks down and releases some energy in the form of gamma rays. Radioisotopes are artificially produced by subjecting a stable material to a source of neutrons in a reactor. This process is called activation. The radioisotopes are continuously emitting gamma rays. This radiation source cannot be turned off, like an X-ray generator. The radioactive material is placed in a capsule on the end of a cable 
called a pigtail. This cable is used to move the material such that the radiation is either contained within shielding or exposed for radiographic inspection. This slide illustrates the internal and external features of a radiographic camera. The pigtail moves the radioactive material along an S-shaped path to the outside of the camera. Otherwise, the material is outside a shielded box which protects the operator from exposure to the radiation. A guide tube is connected to the exit port of the camera. The radiographic material will be guided by the guide tube after it leaves the camera. The guide tube does not shield the radiation. This slide illustrates the entire gamma radiography system. The radiographer uses the drive cable to force the radioactive material into the guide tube, which has been placed where the exposure is to be taken. It is very important that all the portions of this system be well maintained, such that the radioactive material can always be safely returned to the camera after use. X-ray generator systems are a lot easier to use and potentially safer than gamma ray sources. For one thing, they can be turned off. For another, the energy is adjustable and the exposure time can be set. The components of the system include an X-ray tube head, high voltage generator, and control console. This slide illustrates the heart of the X-ray generator. A very high voltage is placed across the cathode and anode of the X-ray tube. A vacuum inside the tube prevents arcing. The cathode end of the tube also contains a small filament, which when heated creates some free electrons. The high voltage between cathode and anode accelerates the electro electrons toward the anode. The electrons crash into the anode with very high energy. Some of this energy excites electrons in the atoms of the target. When these excited electrons decay back down to their normal energy state, some x-rays are generated. The target material is usually tungsten, but other materials are possible for different ranges of x-ray wavelength. Some possible imaging methods include film, real-time, computed tomography, digital, and computed radiography. We'll discuss each of these methods in some detail. Radiographic film is the most common imaging method. The film contains microscopic particles of silver bromide in an emulsion. Once exposed and developed by chemical processes, the silver bromide is converted into black metallic silver, which forms the image. Radiographic film can be exposed by both visible light and higher energy radiation, such as X-rays and gamma rays. Thus, the film is protected from exposure to visible light by a light-proof cassette. The cassette is placed on the opposite side of the test article from the radiation source. Film often is surrounded by thin sheets of lead, which prevent additional exposure due to backscatter of the radiation. This has the effect of intensifying the radiation, and the sheets are called intensifying filters. Before the film is viewed, it is first developed in a manner very similar to photographic film. The development may be either manual or automatic. Automatic developers usually have one end of the machine in a dark room, while the other end in is a lighted room where the film is viewed. The developed film is referred to as a radiograph. While film still has a large use for radiographic inspection, newer digital methods referred to as digital radiography are also available. One advantage of digital radiography is that expensive film and chemical development in dark rooms is not required. Radiographic film is very expensive because of the large film sheet sizes and the amount of silver involved. There are services available which extract the silver from the film for reuse. Unfortunately, x-ray film is often required to be stored for a long time in case there are any questions about the inspection at a later time. Another advantage of the digital approach is that the images can be enhanced for increased detail and are easily stored. We will discuss four forms of digital radiography. Computed radiography, real-time radiography, direct radiograph radiographic imaging, and computed tomography. Computed radiography uses a special reusable imaging plate which employs storage phosphors. The x-rays stimulate the phosphors, which then remain in a, an excited state. The plate is then read electronically and erased for reuse 
using a special scanner. This slide illustrates how a computed radiography scanner works. The imaging plate is scanned with a laser beam to initiate the emission of light from the storage phosphors. This process is called photostimulated luminescence. The intensity of light emitted from the image plate is proportional to the amount of radiation absorbed by the storage phosphor. The laser scans across the surface of the image plate in a raster pattern. During the reading process, the light that is emitted from the image plate is collected by a light guide and sent to a photomultiplier tube. The signal coming from the photomultiplier tube is amplified, spatially sampled, and then converted to a digital signal. The resultant digital information can then be electronically transmitted, manipulated, and efficiently stored. The digital images can be viewed and manipulated using special software. This slide shows some computed radiographs. Real-time radiography permits electronic images to be captured and viewed in real time. The image may be viewed as the test article is moved and rotated. Remember that cracks can be difficult to detect unless viewed from the optimum perspective. The real-time approach permits the entire test article to be inspected from many different perspectives. If a special X-ray generator with a small effective spot size for the source of the radiation is used, the test article may also be moved towards the source and away from the detector to magnify the image. Magnification on the order of 100 times can be achieved with a proper point source of X-rays. Compared to film radiography, real-time radiography can be performed in a shorter amount of time. The equipment needed to perform real-time radiography includes an X-ray tube, image intensifier, camera, computer with frame grabber hardware, and a monitor. Most real-time radiography systems also include a manipulator for sample positioning. Many real-time systems are enclosed in a shielded container rather than a large room typically used for film radiography. The X-rays stimulate light emission from phosphors on the large end of the photomultiplier tube. The intensifier amplifies the faint light from the phosphor screen. The final image is detected by a video camera. A special camera sensitive to a large range of light intensities is connected to a high resolution monitor. The operator can view the image on the monitor while simultaneously moving the test article as desired for the best view. As mentioned earlier, the images produced by real-time radiography have a different polarity than film radiography. Real-time images are lighter than film images in areas where more x-rays pass through the part. Another method of digital radiography is called direct radiography. This method is a form of real-time radiography in which the image is detected using microelectronic capacitors rather than a light-emitting phosphor. Each individual capacitor corresponds to a single pixel on the output monitor. Computed tomography collects two-dimensional images from many different perspectives and then computes the three-dimensional geometry of the test article that generated the observed two-dimensional images. Many such systems use a line detector for the x-rays. Many regularly spaced images are taken as the test article is rotated. An alternative system design rotates the source and detector around a stationary test object. This is the approach taken when the test article is a human. Any real-time radiography system can be converted into a computed radiography system by taking a single line scan from the two-dimensional image for each position of the test article. The collection of images is analyzed by very sophisticated software to generate a three-dimensional model of the test article. Once the three-dimensional model is constructed, it may be conceptually sliced in any direction desired to reveal the features of interest. This slide shows a typical single real-time image, a computed two-dimensional cross-sectional image, and a stacked or three-dimensional image of a wire bundle structure. The detail visible in the computed images is very difficult to detect from a single source image. Image quality indicators are used to assess the image quality. There are many different designs. The indicators provide a means of measuring the resolution of fine features and also to measure the detectable amount of change in thickness. The image quality indicator is placed next to the test article and becomes part of the radiographic image. The smallest feature detectable on the image quality indicator provides a measure of the image quality. 
The penetrating radiation used for radiographic inspection is very hazardous to the health of people. Thus, the use of radiation is heavily regulated. We will discuss some of the main things you should know about radiation safety. There are many sources of radiation, some natural and some man-made. The average person is exposed to roughly 200 milligrams per year total from both types of source. The radiation used for radiography is capable of ionizing or liberating electrons from the atoms of the material through which they pass. This ionizing radiation can damage the molecular structure of cells, which can cause radiation burns or cancer. Those who work with ionizing radiation wear monitoring devices to measure the amount of exposure. The three means to reduce exposure are to reduce the amount of time near the source, increase the distance from the source, and to use shielding to reduce the radiation. This slide shows some visible light photographs of some objects and the corresponding radiographs, which shows some internal structural details. The next four slides show some objects and their corresponding radiographs. See if you think you could determine what the object is from the radiograph of the object. This is a flashlight, a calculator, a wireless phone, a tangerine. Radiographic inspection has the following advantages. Radiography is not limited by material type or density. Assembled components can be inspected. The surface does not need special preparation. The method is sensitive to changes in thickness, corrosion, voids, cracks, and material density changes. Radiography detects both surface and subsurface defects. The method provides a permanent record of the inspection. The limitations to radiographic inspection include many safety precautions are required for the use of high intensity radiation. Extensive technician training is required prior to use. Access to both sides of the sample is required. Orientation of the radiation source and the flaw can be critical. Determining flaw depth is impossible without additional angled exposures. The initial equipment cost is expensive. The following glossary of terms defines some of the terms used in radiographic inspection. Activation is the process of creating radioactive material from stable material by bombarding a stable material with a large number of free neutrons. This process typically takes place in a special nuclear reactor. An anode is a positively charged electrode. An automatic film processor, processor is a machine designed to develop film with very little human intervention. Automatic processors are very fast compared to manual development. A capacitor is an electrical device that stores an electrical charge which can be released on demand. A cathode is a negatively charged electrode. A dark room is a darkened room for the purpose of film development. Film is very sensitive to exposure by visible light. Exposure is the process of radiation penetrating an object. Gamma rays are electromagnetic radiation emitted from the nucleus of some radioactive materials. A phosphor is a chemical substance that emits light when excited by radiation. Pixel stands for pixel, picture element. Pixel is a single point in a graphic image. Graphics monitors display pictures by dividing the display screen into thousands or millions of pixels arranged in rows and columns. Pixels are so close together that they appear connected. A photomultiplier tube is an amplifier used to convert light into electrical signals. Radioactive means to give off radiation spontaneously. A radiograph is an image of the internal structure of an object produced using a source of radiation and a recording device. Silver bromide is a silver and bromine compound used in film emulsification to form the image seen on a radiograph. 